Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here with my son, Palmer, um, to talk about June 7th, League of Legends DFS slate. It's a five-game slate, uh, so we get a bigger size slate today, which is exciting. We have LCK back. Um, we have two games in Korea and three games in China. Um, so yeah, let's dive in. But before we dive in, Palmer has a message for you guys. Like and subscribe. <laughs> That's right. Like and subscribe to the channel if you uh, enjoy our videos, okay? All right. So let's dive into the slate here. <laughs> All right, so we have OMG versus JDG. Um, well, first of all, um, I post. I'm gonna start tweeting. Uh, I'm gonna start posting tweets with the Vegas odds, the betting odds for each of the games, but also expected lineup uh, for the LCK teams. Um, they should not be that much different from the spring split that we just um, came back from. But um, like noticeably for LSB sandbox, left sandbox, we have Teddy um, starting at A to carry instead of Envy, who is now playing for LGD in China. So we have Teddy here coming back after setting out the entire spring split. But we'll talk about that when we get to that matchup. But so I just wanted to kind of point that out. I'll be posting expected starters for the LCK. You know, we're going to get starter confirmation. I mean, this is an old drill for you guys who, you know, those of you who um, have been playing League of Legends. But for those of you who are new at playing League of Legends DFS, um, the LCK starters are not confirmed until, oh, at least for the first game, not confirmed at least before one hour before the, 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 um, the first game starts. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. You know, obviously... There are some other uh, players on their rosters, um, so this could change. Um, really, for the LCK, you hope that the expected starters do play, so there's a little bit of risk there. But yeah, in China, let's dive in. As you know, we have some data points that we can go off of um, because we are already in two weeks, uh, the second week of the LPL. Um, so first game is OMG versus JDG. We have JDG favored at minus 460. Um, that's, that's a pretty big, sizable favorite um, going up against OMG at plus 340 as an underdog. Um, the total kills over under is set at 24. Um, so not too bad. I mean, I think it is it is the lowest um, total kills over under amongst the, the Chinese LPL games. So for what it's worth, I just wanted to point that out. Um, and then the CKPM combined kills per minute, which measures the kill upside, you know, and, and tells us the pace at which the teams play respectively, um, 0 0.70, 0 0.72 for OMG and JDG respectively. Um, but these data points are a little bit off and not as, not as representative, I guess, um, of their capabilities and their normal paces because, we're only five games in. Like both teams have only played five games in the split in the summer split so far. So really, you know, it's a small sample size. Um, but you know, like uh just based on my experience, both teams like to team fight. Um, OMG and JDG both played very fast, especially JDG. I remember last spring split, um, about two two months ago. Um, even in the MSI, JDG played really, really fast. Um, so I kind of wanted to point that out. So this could have the, you know, this this has the potential to go over that total kills over under set at 24. Now, gold spend percentage difference is one measure that is available to us that, that I look at through Oracle Elixir. Um, it's available on other League of Legends um, data, esports data uh, databases. Um, but that's the one that I use for Oracle Elixir um, for those of you who are new to these videos. Um, but yeah, through that through that metric, we can see that JDG has an advantage at plus 10.9% uh, over OMG. And then jungle control percentage, lane control percentage. Um, we're back at kind of reviewing these metrics um, and then kind of coming up, helping, you know, and letting... Um, using them to help us um, to come up with match prediction. 
Uh, we have jungle EGPM, which is the earned gold earned golds per minute, um, which is a very important metric for me at least to kind of see how these individual players are playing within the game. Um, it kind of uh, tells me that what kind of lane matchups that we're going to have and any advantages in those lanes, um, respectively. Um, you know, top lane, jungle, mid lane, AD carry, you know, in support position. Um, but we have compared the junglers, EGPM, uh, both Aki for OMG and then Kanavi for JDG. JDG, I know they struggle in that first game, um, but Kanavi still dominated um well he played really well in their la in their second series in the most recent series that they played against um Weibo gaming no against L lng rather sorry um so i wanted to point that out that kanavi is back to normal um, i think he just had a one hangover game from msi uh in that in that series against Weibo gaming but they did win against lng two to one um, in the lanes, though, we see that um, OMG Shanji for you know OMG the top laner has has advantage over three six nine, um, but that's the only lane that OMG has the lane EGPM advantage. Um, I see that uh, mid lane jungler and support position that JDG all um, JDG has an advantage in all of those uh, positions, especially the mid lane. I, I, I kind of pointed it out like night. You know, is in a great spot over Cream. Cream is a good player, but he has just been struggling a lot this split. Um, I think Knight has a very, very favorable matchup here tonight. Um, so we'll see how that translates into the D uh, DK fantasy points. Um, and then also, if for those of you who are who are playing like prize pre uh, prize picks or um, clout fantasy or any any other um, like prop bets for these types of players um, or for these individual players um, I would say Knight is in a great spot so he you know will likely go over whatever the kill threshold is or assist so that would be my prop bet pick from this game um, but yeah and then 80 carry is not in here because um, really uh, Able and Ruler, the AD carries for these teams have the exact same EGPM. Um, I'll show you quickly how I do that so that you guys can kind of do it on your own if you want to um, for other slates in the future. So you see EGPM 308, 308 for Able and Ruler. So I kind of wanted to see, yeah, I mean, they're about equal. So but they are equal. So um so yeah, so yeah anyway so given all of that i mean jdg really should win um clearly based on these data points jdg wins should win nice bounce back games they had versus lng after uh their season worst performance in the AO gaming series after winning the MSI probably MSI hangover I like JDG to continue their dominance in the LPL but JDG will be very popular in terms of ownership now I meant as mentioned now JDG and OMG um, often play in a very bloody team fight game um, shown last spring split as well especially JDG so that may make OMG a natural underdog stack for multi entry gpp but i think i might only play jdg in my hand build lineups we will see omg will need have to win through top lane 
with advantage and late game team fights, but that will be very hard to do against uh, the end ruler who has been playing as the base AD carry in the world at the moment. Yeah, so I like JDG to still win, I think. Um, like I said, the kill upside is pretty good, even though the total kills over under is set at 24, uh, the lowest amongst the LPL games. Um, JDG and OMG, like I said, um, have shown some good, great kill upsides before in their matchups. They like to team fight. Um, and, um, but at the end of the day, I think Kanavi is that much better than Aki in jungle. And then Ruler has been playing very well in the bottom. Uh, in the AD carry at, at the AD carry position, I know Abel has been playing well and his AGPM is really good, but I think OMG will just have to win through team fights, and I I just don't think they can do that against JDG, JDG. So that is probably gonna how I'm gonna approach it. I think JDG lost that series against Weibo Gaming um with the early game advantage um and OMG, so I'll put that Weibo Gaming won that series versus JD Gaming through early game snowball. Um early game lane advantage snowball. But OMG is not the type of not that type. I'll just say not that type. Um a key cannot create early game advantages like that. Um like way way I think it was for Weibo gaming in my opinion and cream will struggle against night in the lane so I just cannot see OMG winning the series. Doing that in two games and winning the series. So maybe just JDG. So that is probably how I'm going to approach it. I think that's good, good to talk it out. Um, sorry that that paragraph is long and kind of <laughs> chaotic, um, but that those are my thoughts. Those are the crazy thoughts that go in my head. All right. Um, IG versus RNG. Let's see how let's see what this matchup um looks like in my head and you guys can live rent free in my in my brain. Uh RNG versus IG. Um RNG is a favorite at minus not 195 and then they're going up against the underdog in IG um at plus 158. Technically this has the highest cut kill upside based on the Vegas odds. And also the CG, CKPM metrics that I was talking about, IG has 0.96 and RNG has 1.11, both really, really, really high. Um, now they did they did play, play against. I want to see you know when I see that those high numbers, I want to see if they're outliers or they represent the actual game pace that these teams like to play at to play at. And a primary way to assess that is by looking at what kind of teams that what kind of opponents that they've had thus far um, that contributed to these uh, CKPMs numbers. Um, so we have IG who played against LGD and then they played against NIP. Um, both of those, those teams, let me see. Um, LGD and NIP. So LGD is up here, NIP is up here. So they're about like in the middle, um, which tells me that it is true that IG likes to play fast. Um, just based on that, because IG is up here and then LGD and NIP is up down here, right? So that kind of tells me that maybe IG um, is them themselves is kind of um, playing, you know, up the upping the pace so to speak, like they like to play fast. So I'm going to make a note. Um, IG also likes to play fast based on the review of the opponents played this played. Um, let's see the RNG pace, which is even higher. I think they're the number one. Yeah, CKPM in the league. 
Um, they played against they played against uh Rare Adam, which is also up here, and then lost against LNG. It's up here. So, I think they the but the opponents contributed um to that high kill upside as well, um and also vice versa, right? Like Rare Adam and LNG's CKPM is high because they played against they played against RNG, right? Um. But Ray Adam and LNG also played against other opponents. As you can see, LNG played eight games already, but they're still up here. So for whatever it's worth, I mean, even that's if that's let's say that's too high as an outlier, it gets reduced by 0.2. That's still pretty high at like 0 0.9, 0 0.8. So that's still gonna be a very high CKPM, I think, either way. I think IG and RNG, I can tell that they like to play very fast. So I think this is a great, great matchup to target the both sides of, um, especially given that not one is a huge favorite. Um, RNG is only a slight favorite at minus 195, maybe at 200 on some sports books. Um, so that tells me that RNG, you know, um, like both teams should be in your lineups if you are playing in multi-entry GPPs. All right, let's look at the actual matchup analysis. Um, so we see that gold spin percentage difference. Um, RNG and IG are actually both in the negative, so they both kind of suck in, in that regard. Um, but RNG still has an advantage either way. Um, jungle control, lane control, IG actually has an advantage there. But I wanted to point this out that um, Tianjin, the jungler for IG, has the lowest, lowest CKPM. I mean, uh, EGPM, the earn gold, uh, earn gold per minute, um, which tells you how, you know, much gold that each jungler has really per minute, which you know translates into advantages, having advantages around the map and items and all that as well. But you can see like he's the only one in one in the one seventy, right? So that is no good. That is very surprising, and I hardly pick a team that has the worst jungler in terms of this metric. Um, but just based on the kill upside, I still may have to do that. And also maybe because of these two metrics, IG still does well in terms of like the laning and all that as well. So, but you know, I'm going to pick RNG to win. RNG wins. Hyunjin, or I'm just going to say IG jungler. EGPM is the lowest among all junglers in the LPL. Um, RNG has an advantage. RNG has an advantage in AD, AD carry position, jungle, and support position, whereas Invictus Gaming has a mid lane advantage there and then top lane advantage as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it should be in kind of like more of an even matchup, except I just cannot ignore the jungle EGPM difference, which is really, really high if you have been following my videos or if you use that metric. Um, so that is one interesting factor I think I'm going to use to pick RNG to win. Um, and even the mid difference I wanted to show you, um, here you have Crying versus Tang Yuan. Um, Tang Yuan has been under underperforming in my opinion. Um, and then crying has been overperforming, in my opinion. Crying, you know, tended to favor more utility champions in the past. Um, and then the mage champions. Um, the current meta favors actually it's uh, the changes to the meta um is bring it's gonna bring back, it's gonna experts uh, that I've you know been watching their videos of in the LCK and all that. They keep talking about how mage champions will be back um, just based on the changes that they made in the current meta. And Crying likes to play those kind of champions. So I do think it will favor him um, moving forward in this uh, uh, split um, on, on the based of uh, based on the, the changes in the meta. So in all given all of that, I think RNG um, Yeah, I don't know. So I think the mid lane Advantage definitely goes to crying. I think Tang Yuan has been underperforming. And then the top laner, you know, I think is a little different today analysis because um, I think I put it here. Yeah. Nenny is starting for IG at the top lane. So YSKM 
is not starting. So this metric, you know, who just disregard it. But um, Nenny, in my opinion, is not as good as YSKM. So that's a surprising change to the roster, at least to the starters. Um, and there's a chance that YSKM could come back in the middle of the series. I doubt that's going to happen, but there is a little bit of risk there. Um, so I'm going to say that any starting for IG, but YSKM could sub in. So there is some sub risk at IG top. Um, but yeah, like I said, RNG should win. I mean, just based on that, I mean, I think the laners are about the same. I mean, I know I'd say I have, they have an advantage here and there, but I think having a better jungler control, jungle control, and then AD carry position, should probably do it, you know, do the job, right? I think crying could carry a game, but I just cannot see him do that two games. Um, so I think I'm gonna pick RNG, but I will likely play both teams in this matchup due to high kill upside. All right, that is what I have for that second matchup. All right, let's move on to the next matchup. Um, last LPL matchup in BLG versus EDG. BLG is at uh, is a favorite at minus one twenty four, uh, versus EDG at plus one o two. And the total kills over under is set at twenty five. Um, the CKPM is about the same as what we saw up here for OMG JDG, except BLG has been playing pretty fast. Um, let's see if if that number if that number is juiced based on who they played. BLG played against OMG, um, who has 0 0.70, so not really because of OMG. I think it's more BLG. And then they played against RA, who has really high CKPM in the LPL right now. So, so I think part of that is RA, part of that is BLG. I think BLG coming off of a very good, successful uh, second place in the MSI has been really in really good form. I think they will continue that. Um, at some point in the season, they'll take their focus off. Like, <laughs> really, Ben, their top laner, has been doing that, has been taking some, um, has been distracted and all that as well with social media, I've heard. Um, but their team is still winning. They're 2-0 and in series so far in the split. Um, their form is, uh, you know, undeniable at the moment. But they have a tough, tough matchup against EDG. I think any given... Any other slate, I think, before the MSI, I think BLG would be the underdog. But now, just coming off of that big MSI performance and then coming off of two series wins um, in, the, in the split, I think BLG, yeah, deserves to be the favorite. But I think this is more of a toss-up. Um, I think EDG is, definitely has a good team, led by JJ at Jungle. Um and I think BLG, you know, produces a good kill upside games like this. Um, but yeah, let's look at the actual matchup analysis. So gold spend percentage difference. Um, BLG has a huge advantage there at 0.6%, uh, plus 6%. And then jungle lane, it's about the same point minimal differences. Now jungle EGPM plus 55. You see that that's a pretty high number as well. Um, June um, has been playing very well. I'll show you. Um, he's actually first in the uh, jungler EGPM, which you know is very impressive. Um, but going up against JJ is not going to be easy. Um, he is one of the best junglers in the LPL. Um, so I do think this number is a little bit overinflated, um, just based on who they played against. OMG and you know Aki and OMG, like I said, it's not very good. And then um, the jungler for RA, who is the jungler for RA? Leon. So Leon is down here. Um, you see OMG Aki's down here. So, but still, nonetheless, it's very impressive to have that top um, EGPM for June. So I do, th I do think BLG has been performing pretty well. Um, you see that big difference gap in jungle difference and AD carry and mid and support. Um, but EDG definitely has an advantage in the top lanes, just based on what I said. Ben has not been playing well to start the season, but uh, uh, Sean, uh, Shanji, no, um, what's his name? Allah, 
Alo in the top lane has been playing very well. Who has the highest EGPM here, as you can see? So yeah, who do I think is going to win? I mean, EDG has also played against NIP and then TES. So a little tough matchup against TES, but NIP not so much. Um, so I think OMG and RA should have been easy matchups, fairly easy matchups for BLG just based on their form. So I do think this is more of a toss-up. I know BLG is favored, um, but I would not count out EDG. So I may play both teams, um, just both stacks maybe. Um, but I do think at the end of the day, you know, I go by the metrics quite a bit. So I'm going to go um, BLG should win, but don't count out EDG led by JJ at jungle. Um, EDG ha already has the top lane advantage. Um, over Ben, who has been struggling to begin the season with. Um, now JJ will have to play well. Like, um, EDG will only win if JJ plays well at jungle over Shun. Um, given BLG goes as Shun goes, in my opinion at least without Ben's performance so far. Um, and then the 80 carries, really. Like, I think um, Leave, is it Leave? Where is he? Yeah, Leave is not that bad. Like, I think, I know, let's see how his metric looks. Leave is kind of in the middle. BLG is up here. Elk has been really good. Yeah. Yeah, Elk over Leave as well. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is an interesting one because I think the bottom lane definitely goes to BLG. The jungle should go to BLG, but JJ is more than capable of playing well as a top, like one of the elite junglers. Now in the mid lane is an interesting one. Let's look at that um, between BLG and EDG. I think BLG, Yagao has been struggling a little bit, but Fofo has been struggling as well. Um, so they're about mediocre there. Yeah, so yeah, this is a tough one to call, but I think just given June and Elk's performance, I'm just going to have to go with BLG. Um, I think been at some point will gain his regain his form and trusting june and elk's advantages i think blg should win but edg can definitely ruin blg's chances here So I think BLG should win, but I think EDG can definitely, I think definitely a playable. All right. The other two matchups in Korea are KT versus HLE. Um, this is an interesting one. I think um, I'm going to go with probably HLE. I don't know. This is a hard one because KT has... They had a really good season, right? Like KT, uh, well performed, especially in, through the top lane. KT snowballs a lot in the early game, whereas HLE prefers on late game team fights. And I said this in my notes here, but the current meta favors late game team fights. So as long as HLE uh, mitigates any early game advantages by KT, um, I think HLE definitely has a shot to win this. Um, I think. This is a toss-up, but based on the current meta that favors late game team fights, um, I like HLE to win as an upset. And some somebody, I think Jackson in the True DFS Discord asked me this question about why we see lower kills. I'm um, in you know in games generally. Um, I do think this is part of it. The current meta favors late game team fights. So like players and 
players in the lanes and players, you know, during the early to mid game really are focusing on maximizing their resources and utility as, as the game goes. Um, I think they just try to secure objectives without engaging in team fights as much. Um, I think they're saving all their, you know, eggs really, so to speak, um, for the late game team fights. And I think that's, that's part of the reason why I think we're seeing, you know, reduced kill numbers um, in, in the fight uh, in games generally, which will apply to LCK games as well. As you guys know, LCK games are notoriously known for having low kills generally. Um, so it's even going to be lower um, after, you know, these meta changes. So we'll see what happens here, but this is projected to have the lowest kills um, at 20. So maybe, maybe since due to the, since this game is projected to have the lowest kills, I may not have any exposure to either team except for in the team slot, but I think HLE can definitely pull off this upset if they can mitigate the early game advantage from KT. So I like HLE um, to win as an upset. So I think HLE in the team slot is definitely playable. All right, last game on the slate is Damwon Kia, or D plus Kia, sorry, versus Liv Sandbox. Um, as mentioned, Liv Sandbox has Teddy back at AD carry. Now, is that going to make a huge difference? I'm not sure. I think Teddy was okay, um, especially at last season. Yeah, sorry, my son came into the room. But yeah, so to continue my thought process on DK versus Sandbox, um, I just don't think Teddy's going to make that much of a difference. I do want to see how he performed uh, maybe in the 2022 uh, summer split because that's the last time that he had the full season. I mean, as you can see, like he did not play in the spring split this year. Like you see, he's, his name's not on here, right? So... Uh, 2022 summer, which happened before the Worlds Tournament last year, um, which is the most recent data that we have for um, Teddy. As you can see, he played on Guangdong Freaks, and let's see what his uh, EGPM looks like. Teddy, see, he's like toward the bottom of all the 80 carries that he, he played against. So it's not like he was spectacular, um, like Prince and Ruler and Amy and Gumayushi were. Um, and it's part partially due to the fact that KDF did not have a good season um, last last year, um, but still, I just don't think he's gonna make that much of a difference, in my opinion. Uh, you know, to give Lamp of Sandbox a chance to win here, and like I said um, earlier about the current meta changes now favoring the Mage Champions, Showmaker is the definition of Mage Champions in the LCK. Um, I do think that will favor him a lot. Um, I hope to see no more Nautilus <laughs> in, in the matchups. Um, so we'll see what happens there with uh, Showmaker playing. Uh, but that one, I mean, D plus Kia should really handily, handily win this, easily win this over Live Sandbox. I mean, you saw the roster, right? Like you see Kana, Kana versus um, Berdal, uh, Canyon over Willer, Showmaker over Closer, uh, Deft and Kellen, definitely more experienced than well, not probably more because Teddy is very well experienced as well. But Deft is a better AD carry than Teddy, in my opinion. So that is probably how I'm going to approach it. I think in terms of kill upside, Left Sandbox plays a little bit faster than the other LCK teams here on the slate. But I I still think D plus key is going to dictate um, the pace of the game especially Canyon, uh, the jungler, I think coming off of this uh, break between spring and uh, summer split, I think he's going to perform, come back and perform very well over Willer, especially. I think this is, um, I do want to see some med maybe metrics here um, to see how he did last year. EGPM, okay. So Canyon's up here. Um, left sandbox willer is down here yeah it's not by very much so let's look at how they did comparatively which is important to see in each of the lanes 
Now, like I said, this is like from two or three months ago. So really, it's not reflective of what kind of form that they're in as a team, but also as players individually. Um, but just looking at last year's, you know, stats, you see D plus Kia has an advantage in every single lane. Um, yeah, so I think D plus Kia really should win this. Um, lane and jungle advantage in every lane in every role uh let's look at some of the stats from you know the team stats rather um you see 0. 0.6 2.65 2 like i said uh gold spend percentage difference d plus kia leads that early game um advantage there mid late to game Sandbox a little bit, but not by very much. See plate per game. D plus Kia leads that lane and jungle. So everything points to mo almost all the things point to D plus Kia winning. So that's probably I'm gonna approach it. Let's look at the CKPM um when they lost for sandbox. 0.64, so not very high. Now in their wins. So D plus Kia, I think they're about like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 between that. So I think it's going to be fairly low um, in terms of kill upside. I think this is this has <laughs> this has a this has a possibility of being a being a snooze fest, just like the KTHLE matchup. So both LCK matchups. So what what's you know what's what's new, right? Like we're not surprised at that. Um, seeing those stats, um, I do want to see between KT and HLE just, just to make sure. Um, KT, like I said, has an advantage here, early game and mid game. Oh, that's surprising. Um, and they had a better split. I remember compared to Hanwha life, but Hanwha life, like later in the spring split, I remember, um, had a had a lot of vast improvements, you know, to that team. Um, but I do want to look at the players. Um, let's look at the jungle. I'm sure a uh, Huang Dong. I mean, KT's jungle HPM is higher. Cuz versus Clid, not by very much. Let's see. Twenty one. Okay, not too bad. Um. So let's look at each individual matchups from last year. Like I said, it can change, um, because they've been sitting out for a while. Um. EGPM, yep. So KT has an advantage at eighty carry, but you know I'm a believer in Viper. He can turn our, turn it around. Zika definitely over BDD. Um, Keen over Kingen. Um, Cuz over Clid. But life over. So yeah, I think it's a toss up. Um, but like I said, just based on the recent current meta changes, I like HLE to pull off this upset. But in the other LCK matchup, I like D plus Kia. I know this video was kind of lengthy, so I apologize, but I wanted to kind of do a deep analysis on each of the matchups. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy it, please, please, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Hope you hope hope you have a good one and make some money up on this late. Have a good one. Bye bye.